And our dancing went down, drastically down. And really? at that point, uh, I had a conversation with one person that he said to me, oh, you know why you don't get results? I was like, no, do you know why? I said, yeah, it's because of you. I said, what do you mean because of me? Yeah, because Yulia is great. She would win the world championship yesterday, not tomorrow. Oh. And because of you, probably you will not get the world title. But I like always to investigate, to discover, to learn, to make mistakes. I'm not afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. Always been. And uh, you know what? My thing is like the first time I do, I already know it's not right. Yes. So yes, I have yes. no, I never assume that I go right on the first time. And for me, I like the quote when they say, See, I, like that. I like the quote when they say, the first time wrong is the first occasion to make it better. The first time wrong is the first occasion to make it better. To improve. Fantastic. You know? It's just like, you don't take like upset. You're just like, okay, yeah. attempt it. Let's make it better. I, love and I that. like that because I've always that. been like this for yeah. Well, I think I think that's like the the hallmark of um of a champion, you know, yourself, obviously. I don't um, know, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but, you know that mindset, right? Like that is uh, so integral, right? And that, that's one of the things I'd like to, to to actually talk to you about. Um, but I definitely want to welcome you here, and my man, I need to ask you, what is it like being married to Yulia? Oh, ah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm blessed. I've been blessed all my life for some Good reason. Answer. Oh, she's, a, she's amazing. amazing. She's amazing. She's amazing as a, of course, as a dancer. Everybody knows her as a dancer. Yeah. Unbelievable. Good. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, oh, yes. it's impossible to spot such a great talent in our industry. I probably, I probably think that she's probably the best ever been, even though we had a great champions before. Gaina, Barbara, um, Shirley. They, they are they are icons in the dancing business, yeah. Mm, mm, Complete mm. like Julia, yeah. I don't think. I don't think they're. It's like a I don't know if it maybe will be, but I think it's like a once in a generation talent type thing. Maybe, mm. maybe for mm. sure on our, on our generation, she's definitely the top one, and even uh, even beyond that. I mean, we won ten titles, so we got like three or four generation, you know, like yeah. passing through, and nobody could even go close to Julia. Yeah, that's amazing. How, how do you actually balance? Because you've moved, obviously you've retired, and then uh, yeah. how do you actually balance? Because you're a new father. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Uh, welcome to fatherhood. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh my god, it's amazing. It's different, right? Oh, unbelievable. You know, like it's unbelievable. It's a whole different love. Oh, you know that you find. It's unbelievable. Like yeah. like this stage of love. I mean, I've been blessed because my parents love me. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed because I have a wife love me, and I love my wife. But when you have a son or daughter, whatever. It's just beyond that. It's part yeah. of your heart. You can't imagine it. Right? No, like it is. I, it's I, like I couldn't. Soul I knew it because people telling me, and I, I embrace that kind of understanding of. But when you feel it, it's totally another level. Like it's just armless. I mean, like you would do anything, mm. literally anything mm. for them. So yeah, yeah. It's it's great. It's a real blessing having children to begin with, right? It's yeah. a, it's a hard thing. And to be fair, like you know, for a while because of followed you for a long time. I know you're in the dance world in that regard. Um, I was always thinking like, are you going to actually have a family? Because some people, like yeah. they forgo that. Right? Exactly. They, they make the decision, no family. I'm like, that's a big choice. You know, really. Oh, you know, absolutely. Right? absolutely. Like, actually, to be honest with you, our career is supposed to end the one year before. Oh, what, cha what changed? Uh, it changed uh, a few things in our industry. First of all, because they decided to have the World Championship in the United States. The year after the year, the year they retired. Mm -hmm. So it was a great occasion to. Was that in Miami? It was in Miami. Yeah. yeah. To 2019. Yeah. 2019. And um, my dream was to dance for America and retire in America. Mm. So because of that, uh, we said, okay, you know what? Maybe we should extend it one more year. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know what that means, right? <laughs> so yeah. That extra well, year. That is, that is the thing. And then I shared with my coach, it was Donnie Burns, right? Mm, Donnie Burns MBE. I shared with him and. Uh, we put down all the all the situation, you know, possible that you have to go through in one year because you need to have a strategy. Of course. Even though even though it's an extra year, seems not not too much, but actually, uh oh, no, it does. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> As a dancer, you it's, know, oh, well, especially and, your level, my God. And then and then we decided, okay, you know what? Let's invest everything mm. in this year to make the most special years of all our career, and we did it. 
and it was pretty good. So what does that mean, like putting it, like everything into it? Like well, what, what does that like? Actually, we never had we never had um, a situation where we would retain ourselves to do everything. We always tried to commit a hundred percent in everything we did. It, mm. but I think the last year there is there is a mentality like, okay, listen, but the moment you know that you're gonna retire you kind of release. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is the most dangerous thing yeah. because you might don't see, but people see it. And this actually was words of Donnie because he, he won 16 times. Yeah, right. So he, know what, he knows what does it mean to see a champion fade out and then take the last world because maybe they give it rather than earn it. it. Yeah? Yes. So, and uh, he said, you know what? This is the situation. Do you want to do it? I said, are you challenging me? Mm -hmm. I said, of course. I said, I'm done. Do it. You like the it. challenge? Yeah, I love the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So everything in it, right? Like body on the line. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Like uh, wake up early in the morning, have a feeding, like, uh, like go run and doing the gym and doing diets. That things probably sometimes that we kind of relax on the physical side or diet side. You mean like having a pizza? Mm, yeah. Oh. Not, last year, was it? Yeah. Well, it's like, uh, yeah, it was like. Fully, fully. Yeah. I remember, th I think I saw a photo once of um, either you or Yulia posted it was your fridge before Blackpool. <laughs> it was all so green. random. I just remember yeah, that. All right? green, it was all like green. Yeah, yeah. green. There was a picture took from uh, internet. It was not. Okay. Was and like, there was like a Heineken like, beer wow. there. And Ooh. then somebody said to me, uh, what's that beer on it? Excuse I'm like, excuse me. Damn, let me zoom it in. Oh, that was a beer. <laughs> celery. Yeah. Because that's, that's the Yulia love. Like, she loved vegetables. Okay. And if it was I thought you said she loved Heineken. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. She loved vegetables. vegetables. And then maybe it would be me, the this, this sneaky of the Heineken. I love that. Just yeah, slip it in there. Okay. So, so can you tell, like, what's a, like a really particularly defining moment, like in your dance uh, career that stayed with you, uh, that really impacted you? I think I had a huge challenge. A huge challenge. I can't tell who did it to me, but he said to me, it was, a bad time. it was a low time on our dance career. Like when we started, I think, if I think back when we started, it started too high. Like we got results straight away. Now, we deserved or not, I don't know. I mean, it's not up to me to decide. We were third straight away on the first competition. After two, two and a half weeks, we were dancing together mm. internationally. And I was like an earthquake for the dance industry because barely never happened barely never happened so after that we were putting in a situation where okay we have to improve to keep it and that was a little bit um dangerous and at the same time difficult because you try to improve but you have this fear that the timing you know like mm. it's not like you improve like whenever you can it's like you have to improve as soon as possible it's, and it's incremental too, right like, it's so like, it's just like we have to do yesterday not tomorrow, right? So I think that's one that was a little bit uh, too much pressure on ourselves, mm -hmm. on our coach. At the time was Shirley Ballas, who was the one in charge of our partnership. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and our dancing went down, drastically down. And really? at that point, uh, I had a conversation with one person that he said to me, oh, you know why you don't get results? I was like, no, do you know why? I said, yeah, it's because of you. I said, what do you mean because of me? Oh. Yeah, because Yulia is great. She would win the world championship yesterday, not tomorrow. Oh. And because of you, probably you will not get the world title. I was like, okay, how much do you know about the dance industry? Oh, I, I know a lot because I won some. Okay. Yeah? Okay. I said, I don't think I, I also didn't win anything. Mm. I won the world amateur world title two times. And I've been in the industry for way more than you. And I know people personally and professionally. Oh, yeah, but you know these people, blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. So he said to me, so what are you going to do? I said, I think what you're telling me, it is not right. But I'm telling you, I promise you, she will win the world title with me. Ooh, snap. And, she was, and he was like, oh, we'll see. I said, well, here we go. The next was the result. So what were you feeling like in that moment, right? When oh. someone says at you, especially when you, you've had accolades, people know you. It's not like you're nobody, right? When someone says it, like, what, 
What does that make you feel? You know, what were we feeling in that moment? That people try to destroy dreams. Mm. And I think uh, the force of anything in life, it's love and dream. You need to dream it, then it's big enough to do for you to achieve it. Mm. And if the dream is not big enough, uh, people will not laugh about it, you know? So I think uh, uh, at the end of the day, I pursued my, my dream. I want to win and I, I did it whatever was possible on my ability to, to do it. And the good things, the luck actually, or maybe the ability, I don't know what it was that, but anyway, it worked is to find the right team yeah, that is allow big... you mm. to, to become who you want to be, to develop what you want to be. Mm. Because you, because you sound like you've quite a competitive spirit. Yes. It would also push you. Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, when someone says, you not going to oh, happen, you're like, mm. yeah, now wait. Yeah, for sure. For <laughs> did, sure. Did that person ever come back and be like, well, it, I was wrong. well it's it like, people don't do that. Let's say, let's say like this, it disappeared of our industry. Yeah. It just went yeah. you know, somewhere. Well, props to you. Cause that's amazing. Right? I love that's a comeback story. Right. Yeah, it, in a way, uh, you know, I believe on that uh, the American dream. In a way, yeah, you know the yeah. Rocky Balboa, that yeah, of the Italian side yeah, of Rocky yeah, Balboa, that is coming back and win. Yeah, I think yeah. I believe that. I always believed on that, and it worked. Yeah, that's awesome. So, if you've got like, okay, so what's your biggest fear? Right, your biggest fear and challenge. This is as a dancer, yeah, and like, how did you overcome it? Because a lot of people that will look at you, they'll look at Yulia or any of the greats, or anyone they respect and admire and go, I can't do that, right? Even if they've got the talent or they've got the dedication, or maybe not the talent, but the dedication, but like they, they don't think you have a fear. You know what I mean? That, that's one of the, no. it's a big misconception. You always have a fear. Yeah. So Everything. for you, what's one of those? Insecurity. Like, what insecurity or biggest fear did you have like as a dancer? You know? Everything. In everything. Forget routine. Uh, not able physically to do what I've been asked. Uh, uh, get injured, um, missing connection, everything, everything. And that's what probably it keep me on the toes in a way mm. that everything has to be more tuned. Everything has to be rehearsed. Mm. Everything has to be top notch. Otherwise I'm going to have regrets of myself that I didn't do one little things. Mm. All the boxes has to be a lot of, yeah. Yeah. Like a ping lot pong. Of, a lot of work, a lot of work. Yes. So, so do you have a lot like, of strategy? Do you have a way that like helps you overcome that? Do it. There's yeah. no like. So uh, the work. Yeah. It's yeah, it the put, the, put the physical work on did it. You, do you hear that? <laughs> do, do the work. No, no, for sure. There is no, um, there is no such a thing about hoping. If you don't put the maximum of the work, it will not work. It will not happen. You know, I don't think any, any industry that will give you something and not expecting you to to do your homework your mm. job because so. because the obstacles are so much right like there, there are yeah. so many like it's getting, highly competitive yeah but, but even getting a partner right like oh, getting yeah. someone who like matches you in looks ability and or complementary or i mean i mean what i guess from your perspective like what would make a a partnership that is like okay this could really go somewhere because that's that's hard enough to begin with is finding that connection together yeah then you've still got a huge amount of obstacles in front of you absolutely um but the partnership must survive right for that for those obstacles to be destroyed eventually yeah yes? absolutely yeah. yeah i think i think one of the big problems that we have the partnership normally don't stay long longer enough oh yeah i would agree they, with that. they they give up maximum five six years and they they, they split it seems like an apprenticeship period you know yeah like, it, like a, you know, it is shame it. because probably what they miss is a guidance Okay. Yeah. And probably one of the things that we are lacking now, it's really dedication towards who you are working with. Yeah. Like uh, as a as a dancer, you have to you have to believe and trust your coach. Mm -hmm. You have to, yeah, open open eyes, not like blindly. But if you have a doubt about that, don't go there. Mm. And this is gonna gonna stop all the process. Mm. And when we choose to. Uh, work with Donnie and Donnie agreed to, to work with us. It was a full commitment, mm. full commitment. If, and I did the same things before with the previous coach I had, as Pensal. Yes. If he would say to me, go on the floor without shoes, I would go on the floor without shoes. Yeah. 
do I questioning? Of course. Would I still go without shoes? Yes. Mm. So that's like being able to find like that space between, I suppose, being a great leader, but then also being a good follower. Right? Yeah. You're pers personally. Do you know Absolutely. what I mean? Like, so Absolutely. like, you know, Absolutely. leading the direction where you want to go. Uh, no doubts Both about ways, it. right? Yeah. Like, but yeah. yeah so, so with, because this is one of the, the obstacles and like fears that people have are, and, and so like people separating and, and not, and not staying together is always a big problem. Um, but a lot of that can be driven by insecurity, right? And fear mm -hmm. of not being good enough. Right, not a, not being able to achieve things quick enough. Yes, you know, right, like seeing that how to be better over the grass is greener. You know, yeah. To but your you know, I think the combination is uh, actually the formula is quite easy. If you think about it, in any partnership, the base of the partnership is respect. Okay, and uh, dedication to the target, to the work you have to put on it. Mm. I was blessed because I was able to come to the United States and I changed my mind into two sides. Like I sound like schizophrenic, right? Two sides. <laughs> you sort of emotional are, side. Yeah. You sort of are. Yeah. You're the emotion. a bit crazy. Isn't yeah, that's the, I am. Okay, right. I, okay. I want to be. Otherwise, right. I wouldn't be an artist, right? <laughs> um, the two side of it is the business side and the emotional side. Mm. If you see that emotional side take too much, go back to the business side. Okay. So in other words, a way to balance I, it. Yes. In other words, if uh, you know because you're dancing, right? And other people also Attempting. know dance. When it's a lot of no, you dance. <laughs> There's a lot of emotional um, feel involved, mm. and even the frustration you you try you have on yourself. Sometimes the easy way is to throw to somebody else, and uh, you're heavy. Blame. That's it. One word. The, the crack of the partnership started. Oh. That's what the one thing that was in common with Yulia, that she was able to calm me down. I was able to calm her down. I was able to lift her up. She was able to lift me up. Okay. And uh, we, we never ever had one word to offend each other. That's rare, I would imagine. Yes. But it's, I think it's clever. It's not, it's it not like, oh, no, it's, it's, it's not like, it's a choice you have to make it at the, be at the beginning of the partnership. Right. Because if you want to, I mean, in any business, right? Even if you don't like your partner, it, it's, it's, a, it's a business. You have to make it work somehow. Mm, mm. It's a partnership. Otherwise, you don't trust the other person. You don't trust the other person. You don't, you don't trust the other half of it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, yeah. So, one you'd, thing. so you'd find if you got too emotional, you would then... Move back. To, what's the business side mean then? Uh, what's from a because well, a lot of people would never think to, that. Artists okay, don't think like in that, order right? to get there, what do I need to do? If I'm if I'm wasting my time arguing, if I let the 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 energy gets bad and we we ruin our partnership or the the, pra the practicing, if we um, let emotional take over, we stop practicing. We let somebody else to practice more than us. Mm. Then, it, then you're going to take, there's more chance the other person to take what we want to take also. Yes, yes, yes. So that's the strategy, right? Yeah. Yeah, you've got to be aware. At the end of the day, it's a business. Yeah. You want to do or not? And that's what it took us like back to practice. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't think a lot of people think that way. It's like, it's common in artists, artistic communities, you know, I'm a musician, I'm uh, not into the business side. But this is know, the artistry of it. Yeah, right? Like, but there is a practical side, which is really probably good to ground you to keep you moving forward yeah. right like to yeah keep them absolutely like do you do you have a do you have a story of like a mentor that or a teacher that had a profound impact on your like your dance career and your personal life dance career personal life mm -hmm. no i think uh, i had a very i have I still have a very strong connection with my family Mm. And my, my family was dance teachers and always okay, okay. taught me that, you know, to achieve the dreams, you need to work hard. Yes. And they did it. So from there, I, I took the, the work ethic of it. Then I went to sports university at a time when dancing was still a hobby. It was not okay. a sport. This, uh, sorry, a hobby for like for, just, just, like dancing was a hobby. Like uh, when you dance for fun, right? You don't dance uh, sport level or artistic. It was not like this. 
ability or agility and yeah. this uh, this uh, like a uh, stunning body on the floor it was like yeah. you know chopping and like on the weekend and you do yeah. you do your cha 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 yeah. and so yeah. and and my mind it was not on that on that plate basically to be to be um sportively ready physical ready mm. to dance when i went to sport university i learned there was much more than that mm. so i learned uh, the, the way you eat, the way you practice, when you practice, and all the stuff like this. And I, I start to build my body on it because I did it. I did sport on the time. Mm. And uh, What were you playing? Um, I, did, I did fencing. I did swimming. I did a little martial art. Yeah. I did motorbike. What was the soccer? Well, ah. soccer, I was, I was not that talented. <laughs> I, I, I had friends that were more talented than me. Okay, okay. And uh, obviously there was a shifting of size in a way like yeah. i was not ever tall and big right mm -hmm. but i'm my friend over the wear so when it was like a physical yeah it was not not the best things so, so i went in different direction okay honestly okay. with you but yeah of course soccer is one of the things is like it's like a brazilian you know you play soccer in Italy, you, no matter what you, you're born with a ball man yeah 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 that's why my son room. that's why my son is ronaldo's yeah i hope he's gonna, <laughs> he gonna play football soccer yeah. so yeah so your family's had like the biggest impact then probably in that yes. regard. Mm -hmm. in and then life. and then lately donnie burns yes yeah Donnie was uh, like our mentor and uh, and of course dance teacher yeah and so with with because one of the things i've always wanted to get to is like how how did you manage to balance like family life fatherhood now as well but f family life all those commitments for years because how many years have you been dancing in total now? in total First steps. 35, maybe? Yeah, right. Okay. And then when, 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 <laughs> My you, life. when did you decide to go like, you know, serious in that regard? Uh, 23. Age 23. 23. Yeah, I 23. start seriously. Yes. 23. Yeah. So how did you manage to get through? Because 20s, man, most people in their 20s, you know, um, they're messing how around. I, you know. I think I was lucky to take a break. Oh, what? When? From Sorry. the dancing. 20 to 20. Oh, that true. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah. that time there. Um, I was dancing with, a, God bless her, a great girl, but not a good dancer. She was great when she was young. Mm -hmm. And I started to dance with her because she used to do 10 dance. And I want to do because of my parents, mm. 10 dance, not only Latin. But my heart wasn't there. Mm. I want to take the, the dancing on my own hands and not like living into the, you know, standard in a way like this. And that's why at the time I, I, I chase probably the best coach I was able to, to have it, it was Espen Salberg. Mm -hmm. I asked him to give me a lesson. It was not easy. He said, no, say a little time. Why was it, why was it not easy? Because he didn't want to teach me. Was there a reason for that? Yeah, because I was nobody and because I didn't have anybody behind me that introduced me to this caliber of uh, teacher. I see. And the reputation, unfortunately, of the Italian was not like serious. Mm. Like you can start and you say, yeah, I want to do it. And then, Slowly, you just go a different direction. And uh, I was, I was success-driven. Like, I want, I want to have success. I want to become one of the top one. And uh, whatever it took, I, I was able to do it. So I said to him, I want to have a lesson. And he said, no, man, I don't have a time. I said, seriously, I want to have a lesson. And it was one, twice, three times. And not straight away. Like, after three months, four months, I have, like, a big competition. I was meeting. And I was say. And at the end, he said to me, well... I said, there is any reason why you don't want to give me a lesson? And he said to me, yeah, I don't like your partner. Oh, okay. I said, oh, you don't like my partner? Oh, okay. That's it? I said, okay. Find me a partner. I'll find your partner. All right? He didn't find me a partner. Oh, he did? He did not find my partner. So I had to find a partner. I found the partner. I also looked for it. Yeah. I found the partner. Um, despite people said to me, no, I don't think she's going to dance with you. She danced with me. Mm. And, um, and that's it. I talked to Aspen and I said, Aspen, this is it. You like it and you don't like it. I want to dance with her <laughs> and I want to have a lesson with you. And he was shocked the fact that I, I came straight forward to him. Yeah. yeah. And I said, okay, we can try. If I'm going to try it, it happened like I could regular lessons with him. That's, that's how, but that knocks most people off though, right, Ricardo? Because like it, it, it's, um, you know, persistence beats resistance type of mentality. Yeah. And, and where like it's not getting knocked back once or twice, but like moving toward your goal all the time. But a lot of people will do that. Like real good, 
people in good positions, they will test you. Right. You know, they'll test you to see, are you really committed? Whether they yeah. do it consciously or not. It's like a, yeah. it's like when you're asking a girlfriend out. They're always yes, going to exactly. test you in the beginning. Exactly. They test you to see, is, this, is he man enough? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the Italians have that down. You know how to, you no, know, no, you know no. how to. But it's, yeah, but they, we have a better reputation for that, you know. You, like, you, you know how to talk to ladies, in a way, you right? know. Yeah, maybe that's you, just you know? one of the art of it. It is the art. <laughs> oh, it's the, the art, art of, of the partnership. <laughs> that's, that's a good book, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> you know, um, but, but I, I think there's a, there's a lot in that for like, people to understand, right? Because you, uh, you need to not only get, get, you need to get knocked back but to build resilience like within yourself. Right. Absolutely, and then also sometimes you just need to listen to the advice. Maybe your partner isn't good, and that's fair enough. Because like experts in their where they live in, mm -hmm. in their, their domain, mm -hmm. they've got so much knowledge, and yeah. it doesn't mean they're always right. But exactly. it, you, like you said before, you got to listen. You know, you, you have, have to be yeah, willing exactly. to listen. That's important. To and it, it can be a little hard sometimes because you have to go alone, right? You might not have a partner. Where am I going to find a partner? You know, it's not like they. Yeah, this is probably that's the most difficult things in our industry to find the right person to yeah. answer with. Yeah, I think that will always be. The yeah, answer. that is. You know, that is tough because it's two minds. It's, it's, sorry, there's two two minds. You know, mindset, different mindset. Right, and so if you've got okay, so one of the things I've always suggested to to students because I like the. Um, I think one of the most important things people meeting together is that they they align on their goals like straight away. Like they at least understand why they're getting into it. Like you said, as a business thing, they're going, this is where we're going. And it's yep. not like, oh, we'll try. We'll see what happens. Yep. Because then one person turns up five days a week. One person turns up two days a week. That's yep. not going to be good. No, no. Right? Like not you know all. it's not going. But they think, all. oh, this will be fine. Yeah. It'll work out. Yeah. Look how handsome he is. She looks really good. But they're not the same no. at all. Right? Mm -hmm. So is that like the first a thing to focus on when you're looking for a partnership is physicality is important so okay so what, so in your important. so what is the first so physicality yeah. so your actual look well yeah because yes. we we we've been judged and we judge by what we see right yes yes so physicality has um complementary each other physically okay but it's not like the only limitation because you she can be slightly taller than you and you can be shorter than her obviously but on the way that you feel comfortable with it, dancing with it, it could change. But you need experience, right? Because yes, it's not yeah. like you can decide by yourself. Mm -hmm. Obviously, an outside eye, it is better to tell you if it will work or not. Did you know by experience? Did you know that with Yulia? Because you had so much experience. When you first danced with her, did I you just go, like her. I loved her. Yeah, you just went, oh, there's a Ferrari. Oh, All yeah. right. I better exactly. let's drive. No, for sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. That is. Could you tell though, like when you were first starting to dance together, like very quickly, that's, oh, there's oh, something yeah. here? Mm, no. Or did that come over time? It came over time. That's good to know. No. It's yeah. just like, we had to try out to see if the size was correct. Just that. Because I had a fear that she would be slightly taller than me mm -hmm. and that it would change completely the ball game for the, for the dancing industry. Mm -hmm. But actually, she wasn't. She wasn't taller than me. And she was almost my size. Mm. And then, uh, honestly with you, all the rest is like, get rid of the fears and understanding more how to dance. Yeah, okay. And so after that, she's very committed. Julia, I think it's the most committed person I've ever met in my life. If she want to do something, she will. 100%, whatever it takes. And it's the same things, you know? So in that part, we were very much look as alike. So what, what, okay, so from a, if you were to look at your like diary and mm -hmm. you're practicing, right, through the, through the week in, your, in sort of the peak of your career, like what does commitment actually show up and look like? You know, are you, uh, you, you said you would run in the morning, you diet, of course, and things like that, but like, do you practice two hours a day? Do are you doing? Well, our, do you, our, day was build, our, le our lesson, our day was uh, built around the practicing. Practicing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, of course, lessons. Yeah. Like when it was not practicing only, we had lessons. How many lessons practice. would you have on average a week, do you think, when you, when you were um, traveling? Somewhere? A week, it was difficult because normally we used to travel to Los Angeles here to yeah. have a lesson with Donnie. And we were in Los Angeles, we would meet at the competition or a different place. We had, uh, we didn't have a, like a fixed number. Okay. Um, the, the things that since when we started with Donnie, we said, okay, we are here from here to here. Give us many lessons that we need. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's and it. then practice wise every day. Yes. Six days sure. a week or seven. Seven. If it was eight. If it was eight, it would be yeah. eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Every day. Twice every a day, day. Once a day. All day. Yeah. 
sometimes wow. break and then practice again. Of course, sometimes we had to work. Yeah. But even if we had to work, we wouldn't skip the practicing. Oh, okay. Even when we were flying, we arrive and we look for a studio to practice in the same, the same night we arrived. Mm. So it was never about uh, not practicing because yeah. we need to constantly uh, recall our muscle memory. I love that. I love that. It's like, uh, what's the saying? What you do behind closed doors shows up on the floor, you know, years later, right? Like, because it's, it's that work. People don't see it. I actually remember in Blackpool once at like that hotel. The, what's the hotel in Blackpool that everyone stays at? You know, the, the Imperial. The Imperial Hotel. Yes. It has a ballroom. I remember I was just walking past one day and I went down a, a random corridor. There's this crack in the door. Mm -hmm. And then I just heard this like. <laughs> and I like, what? and you two came oh, past. practicing. <laughs> so like, so intense though. And I knew you were practicing, but I was like, oh, that's, that's how you practice, like intensely. Oh, yeah. And I've always understood oh, yeah. how to practice in that sense. But the, the level of intensity was like yeah. n out of this world. And I was like, that's why you are where you are. And uh, it, yeah, it's interesting because I'm, I love the psychology of performance practice. That mm -hmm. like, like what, what do you need to, to emulate, right, to, yes. to actually yes. make things work for yeah. you as best you can. And um, that mindset was like, that was very inspiring. So I was like, that's, that is the shit. But this is one of the big things I have to say thank you to Donny because he, he wants to uh, that kind of practicing. Like I would never, without him, I would never think it would be a necessary to that because okay. I think sometimes to unleash the emotional side, you have to practice the emotional side. So, so what do you mean by the emotional side? Do you mean like the pent up frustration or do you mean no, like the actual artistic? Like, artistic, like, yeah. like expression. Okay. Like face, hands, feet, mannerism. It's not, um, it's not like spontaneous. Yeah, spontaneous is a good day. Yeah. It's spontaneous if, uh, if you do once. But when you try to repeat, you have to understand the mechanic of it. Yes. And then it depends on the competition. Sometimes you have more stress, less stress, no stress. Or uh, jet lag. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when we were traveling, we had a jet lag. So you cannot rely on the physicality and emotional connected you have to uh, you have to rely on what you practice that's why the intensity is very important when i see practice people people practicing and they're just marking through i know already with what work mm, it's okay. not working there yeah so and i'm talking about top pro obviously so you're moving towards but i also think it's important even if you want to be a top dancer right oh, you yeah, should yeah. have that mindset early right and some people do have that to an extent but but they but so so what i'm hearing is that you like you obviously warm up, but your goal in a practice session is to get to intensity. Yeah. That would be the, yeah. the thing. And once you've hit that, you sustain it for- You keep it as much as, as long you can. As you can. Yeah. And then, then that's practice done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, that's a, that's a nice, simple, like sort of way of yeah. doing things, you know. No, it's not, it's not difficult. It's just difficult to push yourself on that level. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah that's, that's difficult. Yeah, that's the difficult part mm -hmm. there. You okay. don't want, it's not like every day you want to do it, but you have to do it. No, no, no. No, no, no. But, that, but, did you, but you see, that's, I think that's like when you look at like great sports people in basketball, and tennis and golf, that's exactly what they do. It's that additional mm -hmm. push all the time. It's like you won the comp, great. Next day you're back in the studio. Oh, yeah. Even if we lost it the day after we were in the studio practice. Yeah. See, that's, what, it didn't feel right on the day before. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I do remember when you came second in Jive, I think in Blackpool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and uh, it was like, we're just so close. See, that's what I admire about you, right? Like, honestly, I think. That's the best story in dance sport that I've seen that I love because it's like you were like so close to first, right? Just like pushing. And you were in the game for so long at the top, dude. Oz, when YouTube first came out, there was the, and I just started dancing. This is like 2003 or four or something like that, or maybe 2005. But there was a video of the worlds. You were, I think you were dancing with Joanna. Right and yes. and um, uh, Australian. Oh, Ooh, we crap. lost that. Yeah, yeah, we lost the giant. What the, but that, the European, that particular dance, so like that final with like Frank Formica and mm -hmm. Maurizio and, and mm -hmm. Evgeny, mm -hmm. I think you've getting Peter Stockerberg. Like, I was like, oh, what is Klaus that? Klaus Kongstall was there. I was like, what is that? I was watching going, I was like, I just started doing some cha-cha to meet some girls, dude. I was like, <laughs> and I was watching this video going, is that what this, wow, that's insane. But you've been like that, that whole time, mm. right? In terms of intensity, correct? I, I guess so. Yeah. So, so I was not aware of it, to be honest with you. It's not like that's cool. At the time, at that time, yeah, it was not my priority 
Dance, it was was, just, dance was not your priority? Well, it I was mean? my priority, but it was not like, I didn't focus on the intensity. It's just like, it was because of the sport background I had it. I, I knew it if I wouldn't practice at the maximum of my ability, I wouldn't be able, especially the jive, mm. to improve the jive. <laughs> you see, the jive is like quite, like, okay, all dances are similar in a way, but jive is very specific because it's the last one. Yes. And people think like, okay, if I keep my energy and I make it like a clownish, it could work. Clownish? Yeah, like <laughs> I can cover up the stage, <laughs> right? Broadway, right? <laughs> but it's not because mm. mechanically mm. it's very specific. Mm. And, uh, and if you don't gain confidence on the mechanical side, it doesn't look fluid. No. I could see yesterday, the couple that danced the final professional Latin, I could see with practice and practice the jive. And how fun is that, right? Because I know I've been there. And my, my things about the jive, besides I had a wrong interpretation of the jive at the time, I had to study a little bit more, deeper into it. I don't know if, if you know, but I took, uh, after the European, I lost the jive. I called up one teacher that was famous, famous for jive. And I said, what's, what's your schedule like? Well, you know, I'm da 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 are you free this day? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You come to Italy. Oh, but I want, yeah, that's no problem. Come to Italy. And when he came to Italy, I said, okay, jive. Like, okay. I said, no, no, jive, like from the beginning till Perfect. the end, everything think about, I don't know what is jive about. Let's start from the beginning. You make the routine. We work on the, on the action, everything else. Mm -hmm. And we make the jive. And we did it from the beginning till the end. And our drive start to change. And I did the same things in Passo Doble yeah. when I was keep losing against uh, um, Surkov. Yes, yes, yes. Same so but going back to basic, like gra gra fundamental technique. Everything. Yeah, yeah. That's Everything. Because you don't know what is the mistake. Yes. yes. And it's no point to fix uh, what is, what you don't know what a mistake is mm. about. But it's better to start from scratch. Mm. So what, one, of, one of the, um, the, the conclude, like the things I was drawing on was the fact that I saw you in the early 2000s on that video, you've been dancing at that high level for such a, a long period of time, always trying to crack. Blackpool, as we all know, wow, difficult to crack. And then you sit there, right, just before that first place, mm -hmm. but you, you kept going. Like that's, that is a, a story of like resilience that should be very inspiring for people because of the long, the time it took. Do you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because a lot of things are, oh, I've done like five black pulls hasn't worked or I've, I've been answering this partner for five years and it's not working out. It's like, no, okay, fine. Maybe there's a problem there, but the sustained period of like continually going for your goal is very inspiring. Right. You know, like uh, at, the, at the beginning when we start to dance, sorry if I interrupted no, you. No, 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 no. At the beginning when we start to dance, I had a conversation with Sammy Stockford. And he said to me, so how do you want this partnership going? I was like, well, we try to dance. We try to win as soon as possible, maybe three years, four years. Mm -hmm. And then if we win, maybe we retire and finishing there. Because at the time, we were not together with Julia. We were just partner in business. Mm -hmm. So we both want to continue the life apart. But we first, we want to get the result. Obviously, it didn't work like that. And he said to me, Remember one thing, you want to rush, but one thing see, you cannot gain is the time. You will need five years before you start to feel comfortable with each other. Yes. Five years. Five. I said, are you kidding me? Five years? I don't have time for five years. We want to do three and retire. <laughs> and actually, five years after, I remember, I remember these words always in my mind. You know, maybe, maybe it's how much the words condition your mind, right? Yeah. 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 So after five years, I feel like, Damn, now we start to, and actually from the videos, you can see a different, a shift mm -hmm. between uh, one year to the other year, how the, the partnering, the partnership mm. changed. Mm. And it's actually, that's why I think uh, couples stop too early. Because yeah. if, you, if you are early, you don't you didn't get to dance together yet. Mm. So, and that was one thing, so it came to my mind, so after five years, I will start to feel comfortable. And I was like, I should have felt comfortable straight away, but, <laughs> but, but it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> I like that. I think, I think it's good for people to understand that, right? Like the time 
Like yeah. You can't, I mean, you can't, can't really rush creativity. But then there's also the training, like the physical aspect of training, which just is time too, right? Yeah. Was it time under tension, right? Is sort of the key. You know, yeah. A lot of tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know sure. what I mean? Like to get to build the body. Um, but is there a time like in your, okay, so wh- when's a, like one of the really difficult decisions that you've had to make in your dance career? Like, I suppose you've probably, you've probably had to make a lot, right? So I guess the idea is like, how do you weigh up the decisions you need to make to get to where you're going? Right? Like what, what, what were like the decisions you would go? I need, like, how would you make those? Well, so you, like some people have to move. You know, I always like, had a, a moment in my life where I had to make a huge decision. Like either leaving home, either change a coach, either move to another state. Um, Drastically, like, but things happened for a reason. Mm. All together, they get all together, and then they force me to take decision now there. And one of the biggest one was like to to leave the coach we were working with, to split in a private life, and dedicate everything and anything, both of us, into dancing industry, into dancing together, and we shift to a teacher. That are knowing that he would trust us, he would believe in us, mm-hmm. and uh, that's probably the best things we ever did it. Because since then, the bound between the three of us, four of us, after became with ID, it is it is what this partnership uh, was built around. Mm. And of course, no doubt the experience and the result that he had, it, Donnie had it. It was already a guarantee about. Uh, what you can what you can get from him you know yes yeah, of course so, of course but you never know you never know if character it can fit each other or it can work or it doesn't work yeah but but i was not scared to take it probably because i reached a level of desperation i don't know what to do you know like i have nothing else to do so i i have to jump otherwise you're gonna um you're gonna drown do it and i did it and when i did it it was just went back but Went back to be a good good decision, you know? Yeah, the desperation breeds desperation the innovation. Breeds. For sure. <laughs> right? For sure. Or the inspiration in the way, right? Can, absolutely. Right? You know, that's, yeah. that's, that's really cool, man. That's really cool. Listen, what, um, what, uh, I suppose like for the inspiring dancers, because I, I saw you downstairs, you're watching all the, the young ones dancing around, which is also always awesome, right? Because they're like bouncing, you know, it's the future. And there was like, like jumping beans. Um, but what advice would you give to like aspiring dancers? Because like the, the modern world, oh man, there's so many ways people are getting pulled. Oh yeah. You know, and, and I always say like running our, our dance business, the biggest competition is uh, Netflix. Right? Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's not even hard competition, but like getting off the couch and coming in. Yeah. Like it's, it's not even it a big even. barrier. Yeah. So what's some, how can aspiring dancers? Well, the make- problem is like uh, right now society, it can be distracted by many things. I think uh, probably the best innovation we ever had is iPhone, right? Mm-hmm. Internet before the iPhone. But also, it creates a lot of uh, um, resistance to do stuff. Because I don't know you, but if I have something, first things you do, you Google it, you check, da 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 da, where to go, where to do, da 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 da, there. Before it wasn't like this. My no. generation was never like this. No. My generation, okay, well, maybe I go to the library and check. That was the maximum research we would have it, right? Do you feel like your dad when you say back in my day? Yeah, it's true. Do you? It, <laughs> is, it <laughs> right. is true. Man, I, I, big shift from when I was young to, to now. Everything is like a difference, right? Mm. But I think distraction is number one. I think uh, trust is number two. Mm. Trust? Yes. I think people is not trusting any more people. People uh, trusting, people mm. don't put all the egg in one basket. Which is sort of what, what you're saying is uh, that's what you actually need to do. Well, you have to do your research you know, first. You yeah. know, and I, uh, you want to be a champion, honest with you. I know I might sound stupid now, right? You want to be a champion, but you follow champion path. You go to the champ, you, if you cannot get there, you get to the closest one. You understand no. what I mean? Yes. For me, if I want to become one of the top one, okay, who is the best teacher in a, in a business? That one. Okay. I'll ask. Can I have a lesson? Mm. Oh, you can get there. All right. What's the closest to? 
who is uh, his pupils. Can I work with some of them? Mm. Mm. You understand what I mean? I know I exactly what you're saying. I don't know yeah. why, why people don't see it. We do it Things in the like, entrepreneur world all the time. It's like, yeah. that guy runs a successful company. You, you find a way for him to mentor you or coach you. Or, exactly. Or, you know, you get That's experience, that. right? Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. want to get in the mind. Yeah. For me, it's important, not the master knowledge. It was not about only about the knowledge. The knowledge, it's, it's give you limitation. But if you get to the mindset, mm -hmm. it gives you an opening. Correct. Of what, what was impressive to me that, and I was lucky in this part, okay? Working with Espen, Espen has a system. Like straight the leg today was straight the legs also 25 years ago. Yes. So it's not changed. Yes. Right? Donny has a system plus he has a vision. Okay. So that's what I want to get. When I, when I was, I was fascinated about his way to think mm -hmm. because for him, one eight, of the one eight of the turn to the left, it was not one eight of the turn to the left because of the book. For his one eight of the turn to the left, why? Mm. And I was like, oh, there is a why? Mm. Yeah. And when he started to tell me the why, that's what he got me. I'm mm. like, so I can get everything all the way around. I can do, understand, and maybe figure out what is the technique rather than knowing the technique and try to get there, mm. how to do it. Yeah, it's working on both sides. And that's what was for me amazing. Like, be able to dance basic action without looking a beginner like a beginner yeah oh yes yes and doing like as a champion as a as a master because you're owning what you're doing I and love that's that. that you're dancing the basic action i love that and that's what it's like for me it was a mercenary it was another level yeah dude. and i was like oh yes. i like that yeah but you see the mindset i love how you said the difference so there's the knowledge like acquiring knowledge yeah but then there's no there's an underlying mindset that governs the use of the, the knowledge, use of the knowledge, Absolutely. right? The way you apply it, mm -hmm. get a result from it, use the feedback, get some knowledge if you need it, and try again, right? Yeah. And like sort of iterate, it, you know, yeah, as, as you're sort of absolutely. going through that all. And so, um, yeah, the mindset. Okay, so with the vision side of things, I guess then, what? Where do you see yourself in terms of? Well, actually, I'll just side note. I just this just occurred to me. So, my coach Penny DeCal, who mm -hmm. brought you over, Penny, yeah, many years ago, very inspiring. Oh my god, she, uh, beautiful lady, beautiful lady, and uh, <laughs> I remember her saying, "Vaughn, darling, how would a world champion dance your routine?" And I'd be like, "Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Definitely yeah. not." As shit as me. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know, yeah. I'd, you know, I'd be dads and, 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 but it was, it was great because it gave me a gap. Yeah. All right. Yes. And I'd be like, okay. So I'd watch Brian Watson, for example, and be like, yeah, look at those basics. It's like, mine do not look like that, but why? And then, you know, that's where the technical pursuit came in. And then of course the mechanics and, and you know, seeking that answer. Mm -hmm. But you're saying the next level out of that is also, there's another why, like, why yes. do you do this? Why? Which Absolutely. is sort of the innovation of. Well, that's things, why you right? put a character on it, you know? Oh, what's sorry? The character of you. Oh, That's yes. the way you put on it. Yeah, your character. Because the, you understand. The, your stamp. Exactly. You, you do because you want to do I it. See. You yes. don't do because you've been told to do. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true, right? That's it's mastering, like, right? That's, that's, the, that's the idea of mastering what you're doing. Mastering what you're doing, yeah. Very few people become masters. Mastering what you're doing is, is what to you. Yeah. What, what it, does that mean? I will... Mastering what you're doing means like, do not be afraid to destroy what you think uh, it is your um, fortress. Your fortress. You like you try to defend yourself. There is a, there is a dis, dif, uh, defense situation over each of us, right? Because you know, inside, if we are dancing, we are artists, so we are vulnerable in that part. Yeah, oh, yeah. the soft part of us. Yeah. yeah. And we always yes. use the knowledge as a protection towards mm. that. Like, mm. can you just make a little more soft? Yeah, but you cannot flex, uh, flex the knee. You know, that's the yeah. was one thing. So it's like, yeah, but I don't have time. Mm. All this, all this self-protection to not touch what you think it work. 
it's based on insecurity. Mm. Because if, they are, if you're sure, you're not afraid to leave it and move on to the next part. That's when you master something. When you have a conversation with other people and they, you listen because you might think you might get something right and you can get something from it rather than say, no, it shouldn't be like this. Mm. Because da, 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 da. So it's like using the technique as a shield in a way. Yes. It's like, oh, the book doesn't say I can bend my knee here. Exactly. So therefore I won't. And then, yeah. But then, then you see other people doing it. It's like, oh, that looks better. Exactly. You know, like, okay. So you have to keep open mind. You know, you yeah. can bend the rules. You can break the rules, but you can bend the rules. Yes. We do constantly in life. Yeah. But for some reason. Sometimes a bit too much. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> then it's break it. Let's see we have a problem up there. But, yeah. But, you know, you got somewhere. Yeah, well, I remember Anthony Hurley saying that. I did an interview with him, and he was saying um, technique is you, you've got to give yourself a license, mm -hmm. right? License to artistic license. At some point, yes. you've got to move beyond what you learn in that book and start to give yourself license to move things depending on your body and right. your character, right? Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's a great level of mastery at that point, for sure. What is fascinating for me also, if I see back in past, yeah, like I'm always uh, interested in where did this come from? Mm hmm like, Me so too. I was interested about where Donnie come from, right? Donnie's Donnie and he built everything there and he's thanking, and he's thanking people helped him in his career, right? But if I, I look at them, the information they, they, they got at the time, it's way less than what they get now. So the Maybe information they got at the time. At the time when he was like a young uh, building up his dancing. Oh, yes. It was way less than now. Way less information. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. So, yeah. no internet. But now, sometimes we get confused because we have many choices. Mm. But they build their own choices. Like he was having ISO with Walter Laird. Mm -hmm. Not a look, good looking physicality, obviously. <laughs> Walter. Walter Laird. Yeah. Did, did you smoke I mean, a cigar? Like, yeah. Did you do lessons? I mean, every Just time, like, every time we're talking the about him, I'm like, he was a dancer? Yeah, man, walking the ladies exactly. and the cigars. He was a like, dancer? <laughs> so, and I'm like, how do you become what you become with that kind of teacher? You know, and right now we copy. We copy. When you see somebody mm -hmm. doing something, the first step you do it, you copy something. Then you try to understand. Yeah, it's imitation, right? Right. Yeah. Before, there was no such a things about copying. Mm -hmm. Even when I started to have a lesson with Aspen, and Aspen was already older, Right? I couldn't copy much. Mm. So I had to learn. You understand what I mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But then you have to use your imagination, your character to develop what you are doing. Yeah. And this is a little bit of limitation now. People take the shortcut for YouTube oh, yeah. and everything. They copy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and they say exactly Brian is doing this one, Slavic is doing this one, Ricardo is doing this one. And blah, 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 right? Don is doing like this. Yeah, but they all look different. Exactly. With why the same they, why? source. Why do they look different? Exactly. That was, that was what intrigued me the most. Yeah. To have the same mindset. What, what did create you? How did you create yourself? That's interesting. And for those who may not want to get to the top level, they can still use that as the way to move, right? As the way to enjoy their dancing to yeah. their fullest potential. Right, is to, sure. is to have a good technical base, yeah. but then yeah, don't the be afraid to, to yeah, don't don't be afraid to you know bend what you believe it's the the the, the, the roots of your dancing. Yes, I love that. I love that. the uh, The mindset, man, is is it truly is a, it's so, it's sort of like okay. So how much okay. Do many dancers that you come across that you teach, do they actually study technique? Do they look at technique? Do they do medals? Do they go through their books? You know, those sorts I of things. I don't particularly know much of it. If they have spent like a homework to, to see what they do. Now Donnie came out with a BLT, yes. a new technical yeah. book. I hope people can read a little bit of it. And I'm not reading, I'm not talking about the figures only. Because figures are figures. Mm. And it's... Again, the one eight of the turn is not what is important. It's the why. Because it's not changing of it. Is it the why? Yes, exactly. It's yeah. the reason why everything became like that. Mm. And that is what I think. It's like a biography, really. You write, when, when somebody writes a technical book right now, they're not talking about just the 
physical aspect of it. But they pretty put inside, you can tell the psychology side of it. Yes, yes. What it motivate them to become who they become. And that's why I think uh, we don't have enough um, books, really. Yeah, no. Oh, oh from, yeah, you look at any I, field. Yeah. I just bought another book for Rhythm. It's coming out because I want to I wanna understand. I want to understand, you know, more information mm. about what we, what, we, what we teach sometimes. Well, just a few, few bits on that, if, if you may, like on the technical side of dancing. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, I'm a bit of a technique nerd. Like our channel is called Boring Mastery. Right, yeah. it's like that. That's the aspiration, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and it's it's, it's a never-ending pursuit. Never, you know? and it's never. the whole the mantra is really progress over perfection in a way, and that's sort of the idea, mm -hmm. right? And so, like, okay, so how do you approach learning and perfecting new dance techniques and styles, or if there in if there are new dance techniques, you know? So it might be, might be, yeah. I. And that's a million dollars question because it's positive and negative at the same time. Keep your mind open. It's definitely positive. But be away from distraction. Okay. Because you have to choose your path. Again, you have to trust one person. You can't trust two or three or four. Because in that case there, you don't really trust them. It's conflict too sometimes because they'll have one way, another way. Exactly. So I think uh, maybe also the economical side and the political side, it's a little bit wrong mm -hmm. because people think, okay, I achieved my dancing, maybe I just need a politics to get the result. And occasionally you can get the result because the dancing is average. Mm -hmm. mm. Rather than pushing the dancing and make the dancing talk. I like that. Now, why do I say that? Because I had a lesson also with the other great teacher. But I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. Because they were going into the direction it would bring me in a conflict mm. of what I trusted in mm -hmm. a way. And unfortunately, in that case, I'm not so um, politically correct. Let's put it like this. I'm not, I'm not saying, yes, you're right. I say nothing. I learned to be pretty correct by saying nothing. Mm -hmm. But you can read in my face, it's not what I want to do. It. And you don't pitch me to do it because I'm not doing it. You can, you can say whatever you want. It's, uh, <laughs> it's only on the internet. It's yeah, okay. you just, you, there's no problem. I just put the names out. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, though. When we went to, um, to England to pick some coaches, our biggest goal was to move to England and train. Just that was one of the most wonderful experiences, uh, being able to do that, right? Because as you said, they don't take just anyone for lessons when yes. you're going there. Yes. So even just to get in the door was like, ah, uh -huh. 10 years of yes, work, exactly. worth it, you know? Exactly. Um, but yeah, we went to like five ballroom coaches in like a, a couple of days and wow. Yeah, and each one, we, do, we actually did like the same figures with each of them just to see, oh, yeah. right, what would happen. Dude, we were so confused. Exactly. Each one of them said, don't, don't do it like that. We would go into the exercise. each of them exactly. are right. They are. That's the point. You see. It was so strange though because we were like, what do we do? Yeah. Do we go this way? Do we go that way? Exactly. You know? Maybe maybe but three or four, but you know, like even if you have a choice one and one, that's a conflict. Mm. And it, I think we are not right to decide because you don't see the way you look. No. Yes. And this is a, a limitation of what we do. You still need to build a third eye. Yes, but you need a coach to telling you. Yes. That you trust and say, you know what? Well, what do you think? What what shall I choose? Shall I choose this one or the other one? And if you say, I hate See. when they ask me, what do you think? And I say what I think and they go in opposite direction. Yes. So <laughs> don't do that to me. That's for I sure. Love that. I love I'm a set of a student's like, your feelings are lying to you. Okay. Because <laughs> they're like, that felt great. I was like, yeah. And then they're like, <laughs> let's talk about the it feeling, was like, shall we? Let's talk about that, that feeling, shall we? I like that. Yes. I like that. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that was horrible. It's like, that was the best one you did. You have, exactly. How many times I went to Donny? Honestly with you. After I lesson with somebody, I was like, Donny, this part here, yeah, I felt like, he, he told me to do this one, but I do like this and I feel horrible. I like it. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, we can do it like this. No. <laughs> yeah, try. I was like, okay. <laughs> the magic of creating. Exactly. Right? exactly. The, the magic of well, creating. Well, you need to. You need to do it. The, the you know, you try. Oh. Um, so looking into, um, okay, so with coaches then, because this is good, like for you, 
how do you incorporate how did you incorporate feedback right so you've got I suppose, you, okay, before I go into that, sorry, I just wanted to just clarify. I think it's really good like picking one coach that you gel with, like you were saying, and then really go all in because that's what we ended up yeah. doing and working with Anne and Richard Gleave. Mm -hmm. And that was just phenomenal, yeah. right? And um, what an amazing experience just getting that, absorbing all that knowledge, right? And taking as much as we could. Mm -hmm. It was fun, phenomenal. <laughs> and so, but we noticed huge improvements, like within a 18 and month. fast, right? Within 18 months, she mm -hmm. said to me. Yeah you have improved the most in 18 months. You've done five years worth of work, Yeah, right? Because we would go really all in on, like she says, you step forward with the right foot like this, do that as for 20 minutes, done, no problem. Yeah, We'd do it for half an hour and yeah. like, and then swap the leg, right? And it would just be one lesson after, one yeah. practice after like that. And yeah, the results massively improved rather mm -hmm. than getting conflict and trying mm -hmm. to play the political, exactly. you know, go to that coach, go to that coach game. Yeah, yeah, we didn't correct. do that, yeah, you know, totally and correct. the personal results what matter because those skills don't disappear, mm -hmm. right? And so it's a great, it's a great testimony. So, Absolutely. but then when you do have that coach, how do you take the feedback? Because again, like you got everyone's got fears and insecurities and doubts, right? No matter how good you get. So, but but then you can also get like a, a, a very big ego, right? If you start getting uh, positive feedback from everyone outside, right? right? So how do you take the criticism? Yeah. Right, how do you deal with the feedback that comes, even if it's from family or um, uh, spectators? Positive and negative, both. Yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you, how do you like sort of process it? You know, do you sort of go, well, that person's a spectator. It doesn't matter what they say. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, let's be real. It's like they don't we understand. Try. What I'm doing. We do you try. Know what I mean? so we try to not listen, but it's you, like you, a you virus. You're gonna get in no matter what. Yeah. Like if somebody said to you, "I didn't see you on the competition." And you should be visual. And even the, you won the competition. You're like, yeah, yeah, whatsoever. Why? You didn't see me? Yes, yes. You yes. gotta always. Uh, for me, it was more about chasing the better rather than um, price myself for, the, for what I got. Okay. Stop and celebrating in a way. So for me, well, it motivated me the bad, the bad, let's say, feedback. The bad feedback motivated yeah, you. Yeah, motivated me. Yes. Yeah. The good feedback. Thank God I got it by result more than the people when they say to me, oh, you improved so much. Well, if I don't have a result, it doesn't matter if you tell me I improved or not. I see. So that was your measurement. Yes. So then, yeah. So the yeah. result and itself. Later was more about reaction. I could understand the reaction of the audience. I could understand the reaction of the people. And for this one, America is, that, is amazing. Yeah. Because you feel supported all the way through. Oh, yeah. Like... In America, they celebrate their success. In Europe, they don't. If you are better, it's because you're lucky. Oh. If you're better, it's because, well, I don't know. In what Australia, did you do? In Australia, we have a saying called tall poppy syndrome. Yeah. You've heard of this saying? No. So it's like the poppies grow and then like you have to cut one down. So if right. one pops up above the others, you, you have to level it up. Level it up. And, and there's some, there was utility to that because we're a convict country, right? Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sent out from England and you didn't want to stand out. Uh -huh. So, because if you did, everyone got punished. Oh, wow. So, as, as a cultural thing, if you, you're all chained together working, right? Well, if I stood up and decided, no, I'm not going to work today. <laughs> that's what would happen to everyone. Though. So, all your people, you know, all the convicts with you would pull you down and like, and they, you would wow. get beaten by them. It's like, no, because they didn't want to get the lashings the lashing back, because yeah. of that guy trying to be different. You know? mm -hmm. And so that mm -hmm. tends to the same mm -hmm. tall poppy syndrome that would just pull you down. Yeah. That's very common, right? Yes. I don't notice that as much here. It's different. And, and uh, well, Canada, I notice air horns, lots of air horns. Mm -hmm. so yes. awesome. But like, that's, it's, that's the support, right? The like support. you feel like you've got that. Um, yeah, it's, I guess it's very motivating, right? So from your perspective, right, where do you see the future of dance going? I think it can go on in the bet better, better situation, like, uh, except for the political side, obviously. Well, there's people in politics. Well, <laughs> it's so difficult, isn't it? It's difficult for the, for the new generation to understand a little bit what is the personal issues. I think most of them, they don't do for the love of dancing. They don't the do competitors, you mean? No. Okay. Who is running? certain groups again look at what they did in the past and you understand what they're gonna do now like there was no one of us that would never ever accept to not dance black pool mm. we all had to dance black pool 
Yeah, it was because gold. because if you get be, uh, become like a black pool finalist or black pool champion, it's a huge mm. status in your curriculum. Yeah. No, they're telling you now that you don't have dance black pool. You don't have to dance black pool. And people is like, okay, because they don't have the information what is damn black pool about. Mm. Interesting. The new generation don't know what is black pool about. Really? Yes, they don't. That's, so that's like the, the current conversation in the new generation. They don't. They don't know who is the who the top teacher, who is the uh, uh, old teachers. Like the people you mention it, try to talk about somebody 14, 15. They don't know who they are. Oh. Well, I try to spread names on these exactly, names me too. for this reason. Me too. You know, like they need to understand where that. we come from. Yes. Yeah. In order to move on yeah. in our industry. And because of that, there is a lot of conflict of development. So they have more um, separation. Let's put it like this. Short term is the result. Mm. I hate that. Yeah, short, yeah, so it's like fractioning. Exactly. Off. Well, you, you come from a, small, a bigger group to a small group. Of course, your result is getting better, right? Less people. Yes, less people. And, uh, and if you split to a short group and most of the good ones stay on the other one, well, guess what? You are the best on the group. Okay, what's next? Or you retire, mm -hmm. or you go back to the big group, and you can beat it. Are you ready to accept that? Mm, mm. Because that's where you go back to you belong to. Yes, yes, yes. So that is the problem right now, that people wasting time to go to a small groups, dancing there, get results, and get out because they don't want to get beaten by anybody else. What do you think? Worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. No, we are lucky in the United States. Yeah. Oh, we're very lucky. In the United States. Oh, we're very lucky. So, so there, are there more people dancing now in that sense, but they're fractured? Yeah. Do you think there's more well, people dancing, but they're no, split around? No, less people dancing now because less of people. COVID. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes Because yes, of yes, the yes. war in Ukraine yeah, and because yeah. of COVID. Oh, that's crazy. Less people. Less people dancing. Yeah. Yes. But these fractures. So what, what do you then see being um, two, two things, right? So your particular, um, I suppose, where you see dancing going even if it's from a technical perspective, because the, the politi politics side is always is such a big issue uh, in that sense. But, so, but dancing itself, do you see it moving a certain way? Like Physically, the dancing is, better, is getting better, yeah. like uh, um, athletically, like people pushing still this part of the athletic side, faster, mm. higher. Um, and you think these things are good things? Yeah, it's, yes. physically it's very good. Yeah. But then there is somebody that leaving the technical side to push more the artistic side. Like if you see yesterday final, for example, yes. yeah? I think the final, the marks of the final, is very personal. Do you prefer the artistic side with less mechanical, technical knowledge and information that you can see, obviously? Mm. Or you prefer more the, the solidity of the mechanical technical with an interpretation of the artistry on it. That's, that's what I was literally thinking of when I was watching the yeah. couples. I was like, the styles are so different for some of them. Yeah. I mean, except for the first one, obviously, sure. throws in and out of his own league, you know, yeah. like there is no, nobody can touch them so far. But after that, there is a very, very much like a personal choice. I think the mechanical, technical are not developed that much. And some of them, they don't care about the mechanical, technical. They go for art, for artistry, for the interpretation, for power. Mm. But you look at it like, I know beauty is subjective, yeah? But somehow it become ugly. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I can get it. But if you should be the example for the new generation, sorry, I don't. So is there a way that you can't really make a formula for artistry, but is there a, is there a good method to approach that? Like, is it like, mas like master your technique as much as possible via metals, or whatever, um, as a foundation, and then get your mechanics working with that early so you can at least then make decisions around yeah. artistry yeah. and yeah. expression? Yeah, for sure. Do you see what I mean? For like sure. rather than for like, sure. I'll just start with the artistry. But you say, for example, generation-wise, right? I came from a generation where we start for technique and mechanic mm. only. 
Like there was no body action, it was hip action. Yeah. The body was not allowed Up to move. Here was dead. Exactly. It was, it was not allowed to move. You open your arms, you lift your arms. That's it. That's what it was allowed. As long as you had a little bit of hip action, bending of the hips, you had an action. Unless Good. you were doing rumba in the 30s. Yeah, you that's weren't allowed not to do even that. that. Exactly. Because you, I had some too, lessons. Too risky. Because I had some lessons like, why are you moving the hip much? And that was like in my early oh. amateur career. So, um, then, then the early pro that was without technique because they just start to copy it, the previous one, and they just add artistry on it. Mm. But if you're talking about mechanic with them, you see they're lacking of information. Mm. They don't master the technique, the mechanic. That's interesting. Now, the amateur now, it came back like, well, we did it before from mechanic. Right. Because it's always like a compensation, yeah? Too much artistry, mechanic. Too much mechanic, artistry. Artistry. That's right? it. Like yeah. And, uh, and I hope the artistry, it would get some mechanic in it without ruining what they have. Mm. That it will change, but it will not ruining the spirits of it. And it's very important yes. to understand how to develop somebody without giving some insecurity of performance. Yes. And, uh, and that's only if you master the mechanic or the technique. See, that's interesting. I always like to, to the idea of that to be a master painter, you, you fundamentally have a canvas, paint, and a brush. But then you have how many ways you can use a brush stroke and how many color combinations can you have? Absolutely. But you have three That's tools. All skills, you know? Right. And then you can have a Picasso and no one can be another Picasso. But yeah. he's if you look at the the way he does what he does, it's like, man, like he's he's got his own mastery and coming through from that. And I think dancing is so similar in that regard because there is definitely a foundation for sure that you can't skip, but people do. And I and I look, I blame the internet. And I love the internet for what it does. Me too. Right? But Me I too. but I think it's a really good message to actually say like if you copy, only copy, you don't actually know what you're copying, right? So there's no, it's imitation, but it's without mm -hmm. any sound mm -hmm. grounding, right? Yeah. And so, sure. uh, so that to me is like, I feel old saying that because I'm like, you want innovation, but you also need to realize that that's how you get strength within your dancing, right? Absolutely. Strength within yourself too. Absolutely. Do you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I think that's good. Well, for yourself, Ricardo, do you have like a, you've made a great legacy with your dancing and, and you know, you're, it's on the internet forever now for you. So, like, you'd be like, check that in like 50 years. You'd be like, look at that, 150 million views. What? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, right. right? I don't even check that. No, don't, don't even look at it. Um, but, but do you have a legacy you want to leave behind for the dance world outside of your own dancing? I just want the people persuade dreams because I started from a, from a place where dancing was not famous and it was difficult to have a lesson. So you the same things. You didn't start in Moscow. She started in uh, Belgorod, and Belgorod is on the border with the Ukraine. Mm. So she had more lesson in competition in Ukraine than in Moscow. So and always been. So we started very low in our in our life dance career, right? And the dream was to become world champion, and uh, we did everything was possible to do it mm. against all the odds that the people were thinking about it. But I think if you, if you put your mind in your work, everything is possible. When the people said to me, yeah, I did everything, but I still don't. Obviously, you didn't. Mm. And many times I was thinking like, I know I sound cheesy now, but blaming the luck. But it's not such a thing about luck. Obviously, something is missing in that puzzle. Mm. And if you understand the link that is missing, you complete the puzzle. And uh, I don't think it's such a thing like uh, ever in life. You can't blame the luck. You have to create your own luck. You can't blame the bad luck. You have to overcome the bad luck with the work, with the put effort on it. And there is a lot of uh, research you can do, a lot of work you want to do. I'm not doing this one for too many things in my life. But the dancing is one thing that uh, I put all my effort on. Mm. And it paid, you understand what I mean? So I have, I have the proof that more effort you put, more research you put, more work you put, more you gain. Mm. And even though I say to you, sometimes we have couples that we think like, 
Why? Why they don't take off? They, they put the work and they put everything on it. Why don't take off? Obviously, something is missing, Bonongolite, and we don't understand. Mm. But they have to understand. Yeah. Yeah. We cannot because we are not them. You have to understand your own self. Like, you know, by having a lesson, by meeting people, and this is one of the great things about our dancing industry. You never know who you meet. No. And there is so many people that you can fetch on information and even inspiration in life. There are so many successful people that they come and dance for fun. Yes. But they are extremely successful oh, in yes. what they do. Yes. The network. And that is what I'm, I'm craving for, you know, mm. getting that mindset. And when somebody says, oh, you know, like he's, he opened this company, invented this. I'm like, <laughs> how did you do? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm interested about that. I said, no, 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 no. Tell me that. Like, sometimes I, I did in the past, I exchanged lessons. I don't want money. I want information. How, what did you do? Tell me about the story. You know, like, tell me what did you do? How did you, how did you discover what you discover? And you can find the little things that is like, hmm, maybe I should think too. Yeah, about that, that's know? the little nuggets. Exactly. Right? But a lot of people don't actually ask. So uh, those sorts of questions, mm. they never think to ask, honestly. Like the saying is, someone has the result. Ask them how they got the result, but people aren't trained for that. But I think dancers can be because in their pers unique perspective, right? Exactly. You know, exactly. Regardo, it is awesome to have you. Right. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah, no, Thanks, man. Of course. Man. Thank you this for your great. time. Yeah. Thank you for your All time. All for working and helping other oh, people. Awesome. <laughs> awesome.